I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Welcome to the Black Excellence and Abundance Channel. Thomas Fuller, who was known as the Virginia Calculator, was born in 1710, somewhere between the slave coast of West Africa and the Kingdom of Dahomey. Fuller was kidnapped from his native land and sold into slavery, where he was brought to the Colonial Americas in 1724 at the age of 14. Although considered illiterate because he could not read and write in English, which was illegal, by the way, he consistently demonstrated an unusual talent for solving complex math problems in his head. Northern Virginia planters Presley and Elizabeth Cox, both of whom were also illiterate, quickly recognized his surprising abilities and put them to use in every phase of the management of the 232-acre plantation farm, about four miles from Alexandria, Virginia. Working in the fields for most of his adult life, it was generally believed that Fuller must have taught himself how to calculate early in life, probably as a child in West Africa, before being kidnapped. In an environment where the enslaved Africans were forbidden to learn to read and write, he explained his skill as coming from experimental applications around the farm, such as counting the hairs in a cow's tail or counting grains in bushels of wheat or flaxseed. It is now known that Mr. Thomas Fuller must have already developed his calculations abilities in Africa. Believe it or not, his mathematical capabilities and his ability to do math was not rare in that part of Africa. Can we all just take a moment to recognize how amazing that is? In John Bardot's 1732 account of people in Fida on the coast of Benin, they found that these people did mathematical computations very easily and quickly in their mind when it took others much more time and they were using a pen and ink. These were mathematical geniuses. Again, we emphasize what they were able to do in their minds. It took the Europeans a pen and ink and much more time to do the same equations. And the Africans always got it right. Now this information is according to John Bardot's 1732 account. John Bardot was a European. Allegedly, he also figured out a new way of multiplying how far apart objects were, wading into complex astronomy-related computations, now carried out by computer. Not surprisingly, his enslavers refused numerous offers to purchase Fuller because they had come to depend on his amazing abilities to measure things with his mind alone. In 1780, when Fuller was 70 years old, a Pennsylvania businessman and a couple of associates on hearing of his extraordinary genius traveled to Alexandria to meet him. Out of curiosity, they asked a few questions. Two of the questions were, one, how many seconds were in a year and a half? And the second question was, how many seconds had a man lived who was 70 years, 70 days, and 12 hours old? To their surprise, when he correctly answered 47,304,000 and 2,210,500,800 respectively in less than two minutes, each time one of the men objected, citing his own calculations were much smaller. Fuller quickly stopped the man to remind him that he forgot the leap year. That's amazing within itself. When the observer adjusted for the extra day every fourth year, the men grudgingly accepted Fuller's answer. Their observations of Fuller's computational abilities were later submitted to the Abolitionist Society of Pennsylvania. Fuller lived to be 80 years old and the Columbian Centennial, and upon his passing, Boston, Massachusetts newspaper pay homage to him. The following was published in the Columbian Centennial on December 29, 1790 in Boston, Massachusetts. Here is a quote from the obituary of Mr. Fuller. Thus died Negro Tom, this self-taught arithmetician, this untutored scholar, 
had his opportunities of improvement been equal to those of thousands of his fellow men, neither the Royal Society of London, the Academy of Science at Paris, nor even Newton himself need have been ashamed to acknowledge him a brother in science. This great man of mathematics was noted in the Boston, Massachusetts, the Columbian Centennial in 1790. And I can't help but wonder, just imagine all the greatness that was never realized due to the institution of slavery. Not only the transatlantic slave trade, but also the Saharan uh, slave trade. Could you imagine all the greatness of all those people who never have an opportunity to fulfill their potential? As great as we think we are, we are much, much greater than we ever can imagine when you consider all those hundreds thousand millions of people who never had a chance the black excellence and abundance channel where black history is every day thanks for watching we ask that you please remember to like comment share and subscribe and remember thou art